Hello, Theo Traders. This is Doc Severson with the Evening Report for Monday, May 9th. Today was kind of a do-nothing day in the markets. We don't have a lot of catalysts right now, so it does make sense that markets sort of marked time today. But nevertheless, let's take a look at different underlyings out there across the market and see if we can start to see movement within that could lead to something bigger. We'll start out here with the S&P 500. This is the ES or the S&P E-mini contract. And right now what we're looking at, on the daily chart we have this little trending, downtrend here, just kind of a choppy little pullback. Very, very benign so far. So over the last couple of days we've seen a key reversal bar with a lower low and a higher closed. So that was good, although today's doji doesn't really give you any confidence that we're breaking out higher from here. Normally what we'd want to see on something like this, if this was truly a bottom, is a couple of big green breakout candles here from the bottom. Now Friday's was good, but today's was very benign, very non-committal. So for right now, what I'm looking for on the S&P is the price perhaps grinding higher a little bit, to form a lower high and then roll over again and at least retest this level, if not come down here to the 2000 level, which I think would be better. You can see how this would be a more normal pullback here to actually come down to about the 2000 level, which is, should be major support. And then after that, this is where we run into the big conundrum with the S&P. Is the price going to be rallying higher to a new high from here? You know, above the 2100 level and maybe challenge or exceed the 2015 highs? Or is this bounce from here? So again, I'm looking forward to a deeper test here and then a bounce off of there. Does this create a lower high and then just roll over again, similar to what we saw back here in January? So this is what we're looking at over the next couple of weeks in the S&P. And this should pretty much set the direction for the remainder or at least a good chunk of 2016 from here on in. Here's the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has already sold off to that, that same level that I'm looking the S&P to go to. So it's very important that this gets up and gets moving from here. Otherwise, we may in fact start to see that lower high setup that we had talked about. And with the Russell 2000 is suffering from kind of the same problem here. We have just a series of lower highs along the way. And I'm expecting at least some form of pullback along the way, even if that ends up being a higher low, and then it reverses back up to the upside. So for right now, this incredibly strong move that we've seen off of the bottom at least deserves some type of consolidation or perhaps pullback to set the hook for the next high. Now, one of the markets that was actually moving quite a bit today was... Uh, to the tune of 2.26% was gold. So this is the gold contract here. Now, again, you have to have context for what's going on here. This is a series of lower highs and lower lows. This is a monthly downtrend that's been in play since really 2011. So this thing has been slammed since early 2013 when everything else was rocketing higher in early 2013. This was falling down into a monthly downtrend and it still has not escaped that. So big bounce off of the bottom, getting a lot of news, but still we have gravity pushing down on this. So what I'm waiting for is to see when this is gonna to start to transition to a downtrend again, if nothing else to put in a very important higher low to which it can bounce from. Price charts need to typically take one step back to make any kind of move forward. One step back to take two steps forward in this case. So at least we have a monthly swing here. We have actually an uptrend in place. We have a change in polarity on the weekly chart to an uptrend. Okay, but in the context of the monthly chart, it's just a swing, just a swing here. So now what we have to do is to watch for any kind of potential reversal on the daily chart if it starts to, so far it's not. I mean, this is just a strong pullback off of a big breakout. And this could simply keep on making new highs from here, but if we see something quite the opposite from here, in other words, if we start to see this pull back, lower high, lower low, then we know that this trend is in trouble and is more than likely going to be setting up at least a higher low on the weekly chart. And we're getting kind of the same read. I mean, commodities are all have been 
slaughtered over the last year and a half. And really, we have kind of the same read on what we see in crude oil. So crude oil, what we have to watch for here, obviously a big bounce of from 26 up to 46 or so. So big, big move, okay, but in the context of what's going on on the monthly chart, just a wee little swing here. And at some point we have to make a higher low for this thing to start to reverse. Higher low, higher high, start to change polarity into an uptrend, right? So we have to drop back to be able to take two steps forward. So what I've been watching on this is the daily chart because the daily chart looks to have put in perhaps a lower high up here and as of today, almost a lower low. So if this starts to move, it can actually move very quickly. And the reason for that is because if you look at this, you know, look at this uptrend here where everything is higher highs and higher lows. People see the pullback here and think, oh, this is a great long entry. And then that gets sold into and all of a sudden they find themselves underwater down here. This is called a weak hand position because you've got no room for error. You've got no built-in gains. So in other words, if you went long down here, you'd be able to withstand this pullback. It would be irritating, but it wouldn't make you panic and lose sleep. Whereas the people that went long here are already underwater after two days and don't know what to do. And this is usually where, this is a technical term now, they puke their positions out. And we'll finish up today's chart by looking at the bonds, the slash ZB here. And what we have is we have a monthly uptrend. We have a weekly, more of a consolidation pattern here. And what we're seeing in the context of the daily chart is just this sort of big sideways range expansion, range contraction type of movement here. So range expansion leads to range contraction. So this is just a kind of a weekly flag setting up here. So this becomes actually fairly simple going forward if we see this breaking above the recent highs then we know that bonds are heading higher if we see it on the other hand setting up a lower high and then cutting down through this zone then we're likely going to see you know price at least challenge this trend line again. So unless some kind of event comes in from overseas, this may be what we're dealing with this week is just kind of chop chop with no direction because we have very few external inputs until we get to the end of the week where we have some Fed speak starting to, starting to chime in. And then we have an important retail sales report coming Friday morning at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. And guys, I'll wrap up with if you're at the Vegas Money Show this week, don't forget to catch Don Kaufman out there. He will be a speaker and presenter. That does it for tonight's report. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.